then I'll release y'all. As we start this message, when lions roar, amen, um, it is a beautiful sense of understanding that the, the ending of a year and the beginning of a new year, you got to understand that as we embrace change to the next stage of your life, many of us are finishing the year and you're starting it the same. How do you start a year the same? Well, the determination of wanting to change has to do a lot of how you start something. I don't want to finish, I don't want to just start a year the same that I finished the year. Whether you finish in victory, praise God. The truth is, is that God wants to always proceed your life to the next stage of life. Whether you are in family, marriage, business, whatever you're doing in life, remember that God never just keeps you in the same place. He always exceeds your life to the next stage of your life. Always. He's never a God that says, just stay there and die. See, remember, the Jordan was connected to something called the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea was upon like, uh, like a Buena Vista is a dead place. In other words, there's no flowing water through it. And yet the Jordan, the same place where Christ was baptized, that same water would go to a dead place. There's many people here today that many don't understand the next stage of your life. God don't want your marriage the same. God don't want your character the same. God don't want your children the same. God don't want your finances the same. God don't want nothing about what you are the same. He constantly is challenging his people to change. This is why a lot of you, if not three quarters of you here today, you've been feeling a feeling of, of man, I don't want, I, I, I want to change. It's time for us to make a change. Some of you have been even taking already the steps to say, hey, it's, it, I, I, we need to meet. I want to change. I want to take the next stage. In other words, I don't want to be the same way because this is the end of 10 years. This is why. 10 years. Remember, 9 was, was, was in part of the beginning of the beginning, the steps of the ending of something. There was 9 gifts, the ending to the beginning of using them. There was nine, uh, the, 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 the ninth hour in Christ. Number nine was connected to many, many places, which was a ending of something, and then number 10 would come out, which is the beginning of something. We're ending 10 years, which is a decade. It's very important that you understand, especially if you are in an age of getting ready to a, to a challenge of your life. It's important for you to understand that we're ending 10 years to begin the new 10 years. Amen. The way you start your 10 years has to do a lot of how you're going to stay and the 10 years are going to end. This decade of 10 years, it is very, very beautiful. 2020, I never thought, I thought that we would be floating with cars by now. 2020. Yeah. Back in the days, yesterday we had, a, I had my mom's birthday party, and I said, man, I, 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 I didn't ever thought in my wildest dreams that I was going to be able to celebrate my mom's 70th birthday. Wow. Never in my wildest dreams. I was sitting there, I wanted to cry. I said, wow, I am here celebrating something that, that I never thought I was going to be celebrating. The end of 10 years, it starts the new 10 years. It's a decade. I want to start this sermon, but I'm not going to finish it. But the Lord gave me a word for his people. And he, is, he, had, he had woken me up in the middle of of a night, like uh, for a month and a half, I wasn't able to sleep getting up at three and four in the morning every day. I thought it was, um, you know, probably the coffee that I drank before, or I don't know what it was. And then my, uh, my, 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 my wife gave me a, 
a day quill, a night quill on me, and I still couldn't go to sleep. I'm like, maybe what's going on with me? Well, the truth was is that God was speaking. And he gave me a word for his people. And I'm going to start it today. And he gave me a, a name. The title of this message was When Lions Roar. Amen. In Ezekiel chapter 19 verse 1, we see a story, a lament they call it in the Bible. Lament means that the ending of something that they have gone, Israel was going through a big, big trial. Have you ever gone through a trial? Then it, don't, it seems like it's never going to finish. Hmm. Like the trial was probably like five years ago, but you still have that trial in your mind about what you're going through. Or a trial yesterday or a trial a couple of months ago. But here Israel's going through a deep trial, and they even call this book a lemon. In other words, it's not a book to really preach on. Or, or a chapter really preach on, but... But, 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 but when you uh, when Christ is revealed, uh, you pull out good stuff out of the Word of God. Can you give it amen? Amen. amen? And he says, moreover, take up a lamentation for the prince of Israel in, in Amplified. He's actually talking about, let's go ahead and mourn, and let's go and talk about the dead leader. Here they're talking about the dead leaders of Israel. He said, listen, this generation's leaders have died and they're asleep. They're dead. They're asleep. I want to speak to some of you that have been in a place in your life that, that God has been speaking to you and you cannot get rid of that little feeling that's been inside of you. You've been asleep. You've been dead in a sense. And you are called to become a leading person for this generation of the gospel. And he told me, my, my leaders have been asleep. They've been distracted. And he's speaking to the, the leadership of the front row of, of the front runners of the generation of Israel. And he says this. Look at what he says. Verse 2. He says, verse 2, he says, and say, and say, well, I'll go back to the uh, New King James really fast. He says, and, and say, what is your mother? A lioness. The word lioness is Jerusalem, which is the church. The church, they're talking about the church. And, and here, I, I, I've really read it, but I've never paid attention to this book or this chapter. And he says, the lioness that prepares her lions, and she, she awakes. So the word lioness there is the church. It's the place you belong to. Is the assembly that you belong to. She lay down among the lions, among the young lions. She nourished her cubs. And here at this point, remember, Christ himself is called also a lion, the lion of Judah. All over Revelations, you see that. He's called the lion of Judah. Or he's always called the, the lion that roars or the lion that takes it. And here at this point, he says the church has been hit. The church has been shaken. And he says, this woman called the lioness, the church, she lays among the lions, about, among the lions, about, among the men, the women of God. This is even Deborah arises through the scripture. Many, many start arising through a time of a generation that is now, listen to me, 2020, it's going to be an awesome, awesome year. Come on, come on. Amen. Come on, come on. The Amen. ending of 9 is the beginning of 10, but also the number 20, and I'm not going to go there. But it says, lioness. She laid down. She's a monk. She's birthing out lions. Now, the word lioness doesn't just ma say males. It's not talking about males or females. It's not talking. It's talking about the children of God. It says, I'm preparing the church to become a lion. In verse 3, he says, he says, she brought up one of her cubs and he became a young lion. He learned to catch prey and he devoured men. So she raised up the first one. And the first lion here that she raised up, this lion was not too good of a lion. But yet, 
They say that Israel would come through the forest and they would hear the troops of Israel coming towards them and feel, fear would arise amongst the nations because Israel was coming. The church was coming. And when the church was arising, people started bashing the church to think the church to stay quiet. The whole point of this chapter is to keep people quiet. In the first line, look at what happens. He learned to catch prey and he devoured men. Verse 4 says this. The nations also heard of him. He was trapped in their pit and they brought him with chains to the land of Egypt. They caught the first leader and they took him away. So Israel was trying to figure it out. So here the lioness again arises. The lioness arises in verse 5 and she goes back and he says when she saw that she waited that her hope was lost. And this is what she did. She took another of her cubs. And made him a young lion. And this portion of scripture. She's being bashed. And afraid. But yet she rises again. Come on look at your neighbor and say get up. Get up. Come on. Come look on. at your neighbor and say get up. Get up. And she rises again. Now again, when I say she, we're not talking about a woman. We're talking about the church. The church is a she. Amen. We are the bride of Christ. Amen. So when you hear she or he, you're not talking about a female or females, talking about the church. And he says, and made him a young lion. Verse 6, again. And then he says, he roved among the lions. And he became a young lion. He learned to catch prey. He devoured men. Verse 7. Again, the second lion arises. And he says, He knew their desolate places. And laid waste their cities. The land with its fullness was desolate. By the nose, no, noise of his roaring. And many were afraid. Because this lion, every time that Israel arose, they roar. See, there's something about grace. Mm. you got to understand that grace has an authority like a lion. L listen to what I'm saying to you. It says, grace has four characteristics, and I'll preach them to you later. One of them is a lion. The second is a, a eagle. The third is an ox. And the fourth is a man. And grace knows how to roar in the midst of the sense of when it's captured. Today, see, this lion is raised up. The second one, the first one was took into Egypt. The second one in verse 8 says this. Then the nation said against him from the provinces on every side and spared their net over him. He was trapped in their pit. So the second one was trapped. And in verse 9, he says this, They put him in a cage with chains and brought him to the king of Babylon. Now, look at, look at the difference. The first king, they trapped him and took him to Egypt. And the second king was trapped and he was took him to Babylon. Now, what does this mean? Well, Egypt was the past, was the world. Right. So, Israel decided to say, listen, they took our king to Egypt, and they took our second king, but God the whole time was speaking to the church, saying, I want you to rise. Mm -hmm. come on, come See, on. when people want to change, you always look for a person to change. Come on, come on. I don't understand that about the people of God. Disciple me. Talk to me. Disciple me. Listen to me. The church cannot disciple as good as the Holy Spirit. Come on, right. come on, come on now. That's it. Amen. That's it. And when I tell that to people, it just gets on their nerves. You just don't want to be around me. You don't have time for me. Uh oh. The truth is, is that God was taking away the king so that he could speak to the people, so the people could arise and go ahead and attack, attack the nations that they take back the possessions that they needed. But you know what happens? People have a tendency of leaning on their own way to lean on people to get their deliverance. Amen. Come, on. Come on, come on. See, if you can't do it alone in Christ, what makes you think 
that a person's going to have the power to get Come you through. Come on. Wow. Because a person calls you and he's on you, when are you going to be able? You know what God was telling Israel? Listen to me. You're in a lamentation. You're in a place of crying. You know why? Because you have not heard of me. You have not entrusted who I am. You're trusting who you are in the relationships you have, but you have not trusted the relationship that you have with me. Amen. God was trying to get Israel to say, I'm your God. Right. Seek me, come after me. You know what Israel did? They did the opposite. Instead of going, they said, we're not going to go back to Egypt because that's the way, that's where God took our forefathers from. So we're going to go to Babylon. You know why they went to Babylon? I'm going to tell you why they went to Babylon. Because Babylon was a security of religion. You know what religion is? Religion is something that Paul calls in 13 chapters, wow. something called the law. Come on, Pastor. They said, we need structure of religion. If you can't give me a structure, then I cannot live for God. So they ran to Babylon to be bondage by Babylon and Babylonians. Because they failed to see God for who he was. Wow. They lost the relationship with God. They lost the connection with God. They had leaned on their own understanding, on their own sense. They had leaned on their own ideas and their own ideologies of the way they thought. They get not understanding that God was getting ready to do something special with them. God wanted to do something special, but you know what they were doing? They were leaning on people. Come on. Come on. Never. I love. Some people will tell me and constantly tell me, listen, we also need help for other, from others. Listen to me. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. To a certain point, you can't allow humans to come, come in when God was supposed to come in. Come on. Amen. And people, That's if they're it. not in a set of religious manner of feeling, getting their conscience away. I remember going to church years ago and just to, so that when we could fulfill the conscience of coming to church, we feel good. Right. Because we went to church today. Uh -huh. See, that's a religion. Right. It's a law. It's a sense of not understanding that God is wanting to get you to become personal with him. Amen. He wants to be your God. Yes. Amen. You know why you keep on backsliding? You know why you keep on leaving back? You know why? Because you have lost that relationship with God. So what is backsliding? Well, backsliding is going away from God, not, not God going away from you. Right. They put him in a cage with cha chains and brought him to the king of Babylon. They brought him in nets that his, look at what they wanted to do. Look at what they wanted to do to the church. They wanted to say that his voice should no longer be heard on the mountains of Israel. Mm. You know what? Life wants to do? It wants to shut you up. He wants to keep your feelings so deep in your heart that he wants to make you bitter and just stay quiet. You know today's people, how they fix problems? They fix problems by staying quiet. Because if I really open up and tell you how I feel, you know what's going to happen with you? You're going to bash me and throw something back at my face. Today's marriage, you know how they fix problems? Quiet. Stay quiet. The devil takes your voice. Life hits, takes your voice. Takes your voice. You know what happened here? They took their voice. They wanted Israel to stop roaring. I want you to stop Rory, stop talking about the God that has touched you. Stop talking about it. Stop talking about how God is doing something in you. Stop talking about it. They wanted Israel's voice to be not heard. They wanted the men not to bring Jesus into their homes. They wanted the women to be stale and focus on themselves instead of focus and bringing God into their homes. They wanted, the, they wanted that Jesus was not spoken into their houses. They wanted, they wanted to stay, they, the enemy wants them to stay quiet. Well, I already told you, you already know, and you stay quiet. Mm. Amen. Quiet, silence, and he says that his voice should no longer be heard on the mountain of Israel. Look at your neighbor and tell him, shh. 
That's, that's been your life for the past couple of years. Shh. How's your marriage? Shh. As long as we stay quiet, we're good. That if we really let go of what we feel, oh no, we're not going to be able to sleep all night. Because we can't learn how to talk. We don't know how to communicate. We don't know how to speak. So we stay quiet. You know why we don't know how to speak? Because we don't know. We don't have the ethic to want to be able to communicate to the other without offending the other person. I want to speak to you, but I don't want to offend you. So because I don't want to offend you, I'd rather just stay quiet and I'll take it to myself. God created Israel to be lions. In Genesis 49 verse 8, he said, this is what he says. He says, Judah, you are the whom your, uh, you, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. You know what he was talking to Judah? He was telling them, listen, I want you to learn, Judah, that at this moment of your life, I want you to step out. I want you to become somebody that you've thought that you've never able to become. Yes. Come out of your isolated yes. place. Come out of your cage. Yes. Yes. What cage? The cage of religion. Mm. The cage of Babylon. The cage of law, Paul calls it. The cage of steady and being... Uh, being inside of a, of a place in your life that you hate being there. You hate being that person. But life has made you that person. Mm -hmm. Your past made you that person. But it's time for you to understand that there's a greater lion inside of you. No. Inside of you, there's a lion saying, let me out. I want to roar in your life. I want to do something nobody's ever done. I want you to rise. I raised you up as a leader, not for you to be in your cave or in your cage. I want you to come out. Come on, come on look at somebody and tell them it's time for you to roar. How do we roar? We roar by the sense of saying, God, you're so good. That's me roaring by you raising your hands. That's me roaring by you speaking the sense of his goodness. That's me roaring. I'm tired of being who I am. I'm running from my responsibility of the lion inside of me. The lion inside of me represents the lion of authority. Let me tell you a little story. This man wrote a story about a lion that was raised with lambs. And in the midst of this, he started talking about how the lion was raised in the sheep because he was abandoned by his tribe of lions. So in the midst of this story, in the midst of this lion inside the sheep. The lion never knew who he really was because he always was hanging around the sheep. Mm -hmm. hmm. And sheep were contagious to this lion. So the lion never understood that he had a growl. He never understood that his look means has an authority. See, I'm not talking about your outside character. I'm talking about identifying who he is on the inside. Come on, Amen. Man. The Bible says that Jesus was a, like a lamb on the way to the slaughter. Because he was getting ready to be transferred into becoming a lion. And many didn't understand and this lion didn't understand, and the sheep didn't understand, so he started acting like a, like a lamb. He tried to talk like a lamb, but he couldn't, because he was a lion 
I can imagine, right? <laughs> imagine talking like a lamb. I mean, talking like a lion, a, a lamb, and you're really a lion. It just doesn't make sense. And some of you are so frustrated with yourselves. You know why? Because you don't want to change. You hate oh, no. change. In the middle of them, they started growing. So one day, the lambs, every morning, they would go to the river to go drink water. And as they're drinking water, they're there drinking water. The, the lion goes and starts drinking water, and he looks at himself. And as he starts looking at himself, he starts saying, there's something weird about me. Why am I not looking like the rest of them? <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell him, you're not called to be a lamb. You're not called to be a lamb. You're called to serve the lion. So this, this lion one day shows up and starts hearing across the river. He hears the roar. Roar! And he identifies and he says, what is that? And all the lambs says, oh, don't pay attention to him. Come, 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 come with us. Come with us, come with us. See, people that are lambs that just attend life and exist in life, all they do is exist life. They always want to pull you back into your cave. Oh my. Come on, Pastor. We're having such a good time away. Because you really never wake up to your purpose. Because they suck you in back to their identity as a lamb. They get afraid of losing you. I'm afraid that if you get committed, I'm afraid that if you serve God, I'm afraid that if you start hearing the Holy Spirit, you might not call me no more. You might lose people when the transformation starts to happen. Some of you are already losing people now in your life. Come on, Pastor. And that's okay. Because through the midst of every area of your life, remember you're being transformed from a lamb to a lion. To a lion. So every morning they would go drink in the river and he would hear a cross. Rawr, and this and the lion would look and he would get curious like like man I want to go check it out across I want to go across I want to go check it out but yet the lambs would take them back to their little hover this this lamb voice is the voice of comfortability and and it's the voice of 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 of, of a place of security it's the place that I don't want to be, I don't want to have no more new challenges. I don't want to take it. I don't want to, I don't, don't tell me to change our relationship. We've been good for the past five years. You know, what we do, we just get over it. We put everything on the carpet and move on. I know how to, just, just, just leave me alone. Don't tell me to change no more. There's many people that are tired of changing. If you hate change, you must have, you should hate life. On the ice, on the on the 99 right now, there's a lot of changes. Or oh, in our 99 right now, there's a lot of changes. I hate going through through the beginning of White Lane all the way to to uh, to uh, Rosedale, Olive or whatever it is, all the way to Olive. My, I now I don't know about you, but if you live in Bakersfield and you're going north, I mean there is a a a, a lane with bricks. Have you gone through it? Raise your hand if you've gone through that. Hey, you're just so upset that it took you all the way to stop. I mean, uh, it's Sever Standard, and you just wanted to get off on California, like right here. And like, you're, I wish I could just jump the car over. It's like you were upset. You know, the first time that I got onto it, you know, we were going to a little lunch, you know? Me, my kids are cute, right? Right? Selfie picture? You know, it was perfect, you know, nice. And all of a sudden, we get into this lane. I said, oh, it must be happening. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I don't think they're going to shut everything off. They must leave some room to get off of here. Right. <laughs> when you get in a sense of commitment, it takes out of you the best of you. It takes out of you the best of you. It's like every frustration was let out of me right there in that place. I'm like, man, why am I going to live? So these people, we get right to the city. How they not going to allow somebody to come? You know, I was complaining the whole time I was being negative, the whole time on that road, because the truth is, I didn't like to change. Mm. Have you ever been there before? Oh, yeah. I don't think I'm the only one. If you're a human, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. 
Can you give me an amen? amen? And you're standing there, and you're in the middle, and we're, and then my wife goes, well, maybe you'll get off on the next one. No, it's not false prophecy, right? <laughs> and I'm over here upset at the kids. By the time I get to, I think it was IHOP, I was already grouchy, I was already mad, I'm already, we spent 30 minutes on the road for nothing, just because we took the wrong lane. Just because I did not pay attention that before the lane, there's a sign that says. Detour. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and, and, and some of you don't take the detours. Like, you don't pay attention to the signs of your life. Ooh, come on, Pastor. Wow. Come on. You're straight ignoring every sign of the sense of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is telling you, come on, you need to rise up. They need to hear your voice. The church needs to hear your voice. I raised you up for a time right now. You're a leader. You need to raise your voice about what's gone on to your life. Raise your voice on how good God's been to your life. How did you get through that? Raise your voice. You need to rise in the middle of the situation. And the enemy likes to keep you silent. Silence of the lambs. Oh, <laughs> come on. Silence. You feel it, but you don't like to humble yourself. You don't like to lay your pride down. You don't like to go back to the sensitive person that you were with God. When you spend that time with him and cried with him. He with you and you with him. And it was like, man, this feels good, man. Like G and Alexis, right? Crying right there. He says, there was no altar call. Come on. It was the simplicity of God's goodness coming into their soul, and he was giving them a feeling that many people. Amen. I am with you. Amen. It's like the blessing of blessings. Amen. I am with you. And so this lion decided to one day go to the river and stand there. And as he heard the other lions roar, roar in the wilderness, this lion one day said, listen, I need to leave the lambs. Not the rams, the lambs. <laughs> and I need to become a rat. <laughs> Come on now, somebody. Okay, okay, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> See how I can start a conversation without saying a conversation, but I can get you to think about something you think I'm that telling you to think of? See how easy it is for me to get you to think something? Right away, you thought Pastor Mike is shooting at somebody that has another team. Right? Right away. But that's not what I'm talking about. Right. But you're talking about that. Well, not. How do you know? But I know you. Ah, oh, because you have a jacket on me. Ooh, That's come on, why. Come on, Pastor. Because people have a jacket. You talk to your wife and you say, she says, I know what you're trying to say. What am I trying to say? You're trying to say this and this and this and this and that. And the whole time you're saying, like, where'd you get that from? Come on, Pastor. Because they have a jacket on me. They already see you a certain way. They already, they already know you. They already know what response they're going to give before you even get the response. Wow. You're already talking before you even talk. Like in your mind, you already said the whole story of how you're going to come back on what you're saying. Come on. And in the middle of this situation, the lion comes to the closeness of the river. And one day he decided, as the worship team comes up, one day he decided to be curious to the other side. And he looks, and one day he said, listen, listen, he said, he said, why have I not tried something new in me? He decided to step into the next stage of his life, and the lion came back to the lambs. To all the sheep. Have you ever heard sheep talk? <laughs> sheep. We don't have them here in Jesus' name. <laughs> the sheep, all they talk about is about sheep stuff. <laughs> That's right. So they're always cheap and they're cheap. And all these sheep are always talking about other stuff. Like 
Did you see that? I think that he should have done it this way. <laughs> I think this. I think that. You're always talking about senseless. I call it dumb talk. Have you ever seen dumb talk? You sit there and talk about dumb stuff that ends up in a dumb fight. Why are you fighting? I don't know. I don't even know what the fight was about. We've just been mad for three days already. Wow. Why are you fighting? We've just been talking about dumb stuff. It's things that have no sense of life, no, no, no understanding of nothing, no, no sense. Why are we even bringing this conversation up? You know why? Because we like to be sheep. Wow. You want to talk about stuff that has no sense. You want to be a lamb. You always want to talk about stuff like lambs. You don't want to prosper. You don't want to get your life somewhere else. Come on, let's go. Let's get in. Let's do something new. Let's get into ministry. Let's do something new. You're like, uh, I don't know. You know, I'll do it really, really, really slow. <laughs> By the time you know it, you're at 60 years old saying, I might get into it. <laughs> when you're supposed to be retiring. But instead of retiring, guess what? You're barely getting the feelings of when you were 30. Why are you barely getting those feelings? Because you're a little backtrack. You're waiting on something that the enemy is taking from you. That the only way you're going to get it is by stepping out and doing it. Amen. Mm. Amen. Have you ever heard a lamb talk? A lamb is always negative. They talk about negative stuff. Their conversations are negative. They talk about how they've been like this and they've been like that because they have no sense of understanding that there's a moment in a season of your life that there's a lion that needs to come out of you for you to proceed forward to take what God is giving you. Well, God gave it to me, yes, but guess what? You in body and flesh, you need to take it. God gave you love. That doesn't mean that you're loving. You have to activate it. Right. You have to activate what God gave us. You have to activate and take it. And that's where the lion comes. Nobody's going to hand you it in life. Nobody's going to say, here, here's everything you decided. You have to go and take what God's given to you already. You need to say, that is mine, and I need to take it. Our marriage is mine. My children are mine. My life is, come on, you need to take it. The lion needs to come out of you, and you need to stop sitting backwards and waiting and waiting. And waiting. What are you waiting for? Amen. Why are you waiting? Why are you returning back to Babylon? To religion, sitting there, it feels good, it's on time, and you go home. Right. I remember doing that as a little kid in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it done? I was done it. Because we were just going to a place to fill our conscience up that we went to somewhere to church. But there was no really encounter with us. There was really no change. And look at your neighbor and tell him, when are you going to start roaring? Come on. Look at your neighbor and tell him, when are you going to start roaring? There's a lion inside of you. There's a lion inside of you. There's a lion inside of you. Hey, come on. His name is Jesus. Hey. There's a lion inside of you. There's a lion inside of you. There's a lion that came out of Esther. There's a lion that Paul spoke about that rose. There's a lion inside of you. There's a lion saying, listen to me, I want to take my place in your life. There's a lion inside. But you don't know what they hurt me. You don't know what they did to me. You don't know this. You don't know this. Listen to me. If you continue to live in the past, then get ready for 2020 because it's going to be your past. Wow. Whatever the devil continues to remind you of is what the devil wants to continue to repeat. If you thought of it, it's because he wants you to repeat it. If he's attacking you there, it's because he wants you to repeat it. Remember, the devil is like a roaring lion. Right. Mm, come on. Like. Come on. Right. They don't say he is. Like. No, he'll try to speak like one, but he has no power. There's a power being given. It's time for you to take back what God is telling you to take back. You need to, you need to, you need to move forward right. come on. to the next stage of your lives. This is why the word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. And it says like this, 2 Corinthians 10, 3. He says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according 
to the flesh. Amen. We don't sit there and fight against what's happening in us. We need to understand that we need to come to God and we need to allow God to take control. You need to allow the Spirit of God to take control. Well, I'll just let it happen. It's never going to happen. Listen to me. It's not going to happen. Well, it's, it's not going to happen if you don't step to want to take, take the change to do it. You need to take the change. Okay, this year, I'm going to do, listen to me. I'm not tell, I'm telling you to put a law over you. I'm not telling you to put these decrees over you. I'm telling you to step out into knowing that it's time for me to take that change that the Spirit of God is telling me to take. The Spirit of God is speaking to me. The Spirit of God is speaking to me. You know, the Spirit of this lion speaks to you in a very subtle, sweet voice inside your soul. Amen. Sometimes you want to expect for God to just roar out of you. And sometimes it's not like that. Sometimes it's like, well, I start to forgive you. And you're like, who? 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 Go ask for change. Sit down with your wife and tell her, what are we going to do this year? <laughs> sit down with your peers and tell them what's my next step sometimes the spirit of God is telling you to step out Amen. to speak I mean me and my wife are the, since November putting the plans talking about where God is taking us are you going to go in another regular year without setting yourself to say this is the time to change? Where are you going to roar? Where are you going to take the challenge of your life? Where? There's three things that God wants to take you. Listen. Number one, that the enemy wants to take away from you, God wants to give to you, is the enemy wants to take away from you to stop talking about Christ. Number two, the enemy wants to stop you from praying. And how do you pray? You pray by believing right. Amen. The third thing he wants to stop you, he wants to stop you from confessing your future. He wants to stop you from confessing your future. Even though everything's not where it needs to be, you speak it. You speak it like you have it. Amen. Talk to it. Talk to it. Come on, look at somebody say, talk to it. Talk to it. You gotta talk to it. In Acts 4 16, they said this. They told Paul this. He said, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. In other words, it's starting. They saw a miracle happen. And you know what they wanted them to do? If you keep on reading, they wanted them to stay quiet about this miracle. They want everybody to stay quiet. They say, don't, don't speak about how God's changed your life. Don't, don't, don't answer to that feeling that God's telling you to answer to. Keep, keep that down to yourself. Verse 17 says this. Says this. He says, but so that is, it spreads to further among the people. Let us severely threaten them. That from now on, they speak to no man in this name. They wanted to shut them up from telling their story. In the same chapter, they didn't listen. And in verse 33, this is what they did. In verse 33, and with great power, the apostles gave witness in the same chapter. To the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words. And then he says. And great grace. Amen. Was upon them all. Wow. Great grace. Was upon them all. It seems like when the enemy. Wants to quiet you. There's a lion inside of you. That has to roar. The lion that was across the river. He decided to say. I'm going to cross. I'm going to make the change. I'm leaving you. I'm leaving the way. I'm not talking about leaving your physical position. I'm talking about leaving your spiritual place of where you're at to cross to the next stage of where God has called you to cross. And the lion started walking across the river. And as he crossed the river, 
A couple of lambs followed him. See, when change is going to happen, people want to see change in them, so they're going to see change in you, and they're going to follow. Come on now. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be this way. So when he went across, he met up with this other tribe, the tribe of his family. I've been called to be a lion, but I've been hanging around with lambs. I have a lambish attitude, a lambish way of thinking. I have a lambish way of, of proceeding the way I think, my, my philosophy of things, the way I am. I have a way of thinking, and that way of thinking is killing me. That's why Paul said, listen, there's one thing you need to do. You need to renew your mind. You need to renew your mind. You need to change the way you think. You got to change the way you live. You got to change the way it is. You got to learn to proceed, to go forward, to cross the river. To cross the river. You got to cross the river. It's time for you to cross the river. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him, do you see me? It's changing, it's changing, it's changing. A woman and a man that serves God is a man and a woman that are sensitive to the Spirit of God. Are those that walk in place, allowing the Spirit to guide them and direct them to show them. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that comes in you to roar inside of you. Sometimes the Spirit of God will teach you like an eagle. My friend, today I want to speak to you and tell you that God is wanting to raise up lions, leaders, men and women of God to lead this generation. I might not be speaking to everybody, but I know I'm speaking to somebody. God is telling me to tell you it's time for you to arrive like a lion. You need to roar like a lion. You need to take your place like a lion. You need to say, listen to me, I'm tired of being trapped in a cage. God wanted Israel to roar. And God said, listen, Israel, you're like a vine. A vine don't produce nothing. I gave you everything. And because I gave you everything, you became spoiled with that, with that what I gave you. Right. You have not answered to what I called you to do. I reached you from a place so you could reach others, so you could speak to others, so you could answer to the next place of your life. And Israel, you've been looking too much. Because in that same chapter, he talks about the vine. He says, what are you going to do? Are you going to get up? Or are you going to go back to sleep? All year 2019, what did you do? Well, I did this, I did this, I did this. I'm not talking about what you did for your life. What did you do for others? They say, how will I know that they're my disciples? He says, by when they learn, learn how to love one another. Lambs have not learned how to love one another. Lambs criticize one another. They talk about one another. Well, I don't accept everybody. I want, I want this team. I want this. I want that. This is to be forget what it was. Accept what it is. God is saying, I want to change, man. Just don't stay in your place of just thinking and, and thinking about what you don't like and what you do do like. Listen, let that go and let God take you to the next stage of your life. Well, this is just too radical for me right now. Tell me that in February when you're in a fight and you're getting ready to lose your marriage. Tell me that. Go ahead. Go, go tell me that. I tell a pastor. I, I, I had met with a pastor with the big church and I told him, I told him, what is the one thing that you tell your people when they're going through it? He goes, you know, I don't really give them too much words. I said, how many sessions do you have a year? He goes, I probably have one or two. Well, I'm having too many. There's something wrong here. He goes, you know what I tell him? I said, what is that? He goes, I tell him, you need to go home and roar. Go home and roar? I like that. So you know what I'm going to tell you? Go home, take it out. Go home and do what I've done for 25 years. Lock the door, put on worship music, and start roaring. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
I was so frustrated with that road that I, I literally wanted to stop in the middle of that road and said, this is not right. This is not right. I literally was so frustrated. But the truth is, is I had to be committed to go all the way to stop there. Lord, what was it at? Uh, seven standard. And then I got off on seven standard, made a big old right. turn. And then you came right back on the freeway. Just to get off on California. We were two exits away. Sure. 